Welcome back, guys. I trust you've been staying safe. Now, there's a saying that you cannot kill the truth. And also, that the truth is like a lit lamp. If you put it under the bed, it's still going to shine through and you can't hide the light. These popular sayings are very relevant to today's true crime story and is epitomized by the facts of this true crime story. Now, the long unsolved murder case of iconic rapper Tupac Amaru Shakur has taken a dramatic leap forward after nearly 27 years of mystery, speculation and unanswered questions. This is a major breakthrough and guess what? The police have finally arrested a very key suspect in the person of Dwayne Keith Davis, aka Keefy D. Now, just to backtrack a bit, on the 7th of September 1996, the world would end up losing one of its greatest artists when Tupac Amaru Shakur was unfortunately fatally shot in Las Vegas. Now, I remember this incident very well. I was quite young, but I have a very good memory of it. I was still here in my country, Ghana, in Africa, when the case broke. And trust you me, it shook the country. That is the amount of impact that Tupac had as an artist and an individual. Now, the incident occurred after he attended a boxing event and was shot multiple times. And this, like I said, really left fans devastated worldwide. And I was one of those people. I was now getting into consuming hip-hop music and Tupac was one of the first hip-hop artists whose content I was really listening to and I was enjoying. Now, in the years that followed, the investigation into Tupac's murder went cold and this gave rise to a lot of conspiracy theories and rumors because obviously, when a case goes cold, it leaves room for imagination. It leaves room for people to speculate and try to fill the gap with speculations, conspiracy theories, and also their own imaginations. And that was exactly what happened. To the point that some even were spinning stories that Tupac wasn't even dead and that he was still alive, living somewhere in Cuba. Yeah, I heard that here in Africa too. But finally... In a surprising twist, the Las Vegas Metro Police Department reopened the case following a search that they conducted at Keefe D's residence. The search took place on the 17th of July, 2023, and it ended up raising questions and eventually led to renewed hope that maybe this time the long outstanding mystery of the passing of Tupac Amaru Shakur was going to be solved. So, during this search at Kifi D's residence, the police discovered bullets at Kifi D's home, and this raised suspicion that they could be linked to Tupac's tragic murder. The fact that such crucial evidence may have been in Kifi D's possession for over 26 years actually surprises a lot of people including myself and it sparks speculation that could Kifi D actually have been potentially involved in the crime that led to the passing of Tupac because why would he have these bullets if these bullets would eventually now turn out to be linked to the murder Dwayne Keith Davis aka Kifi D (laughs) If you didn't know, well, he is no stranger to the Tupac murder case. He has done several interviews and even in his own book titled Compton Street Legend, he went on to admit to being in the quiet Cadillac from which the fatal shots were fired towards the BMW that Tupac and the CEO of Death Row Records, Suge Knight, were in on that fateful night. 
Tiffy D has a history with the Crips and claims to be the uncle of a gentleman by name Orlando Anderson, who was suspected, at least on the streets, of being Tupac's shooter. I hope you are following because this is a whole web of conspiracy at the same time a whole web of events that seem easy to get lost in and it has taken so long almost 27 years some would say that it's just too long and that the police didn't prioritize the case some would also say kudos to the police because they didn't give up on the case I would choose to go with the kudos because in some jurisdictions, this cold case would have just been left cold and, and probably even frozen up. Now, Orlando Anderson's involvement in a fight with Tupac and his crew at the MGM Grand Hotel just before the fatal shooting has long been a point of interest in the case. Rightly so, because usually when there's an incident with regards to someone being attacked. As part of investigations, the little I know is that they, they look out for somebody who may have a beef with the person or someone who might have motive to have perpetrated that action against the victim. Now, if he was engaged in a fight with somebody just some few hours before he would now be fatally shot, obviously, that fight would be relevant. But then, with Kifi D's arrest, new questions are now emerging about the connections between these individuals and the events of that fateful night. Aside from the bullets found in his house, investigators seized several items during the search at Kifi D's residence, including a computer hard drive, cell phones, a copy of Vibe magazine featuring Tupac, and tabs filled with old photographs. The search warrant was executed at a Las Vegas home owned by Kifi D's wife by name Paula Clemons as part of the ongoing murder investigation. And I have a feeling that there's going to be more coming out of the police sorting through the stuff that they seized. Because I don't think they just got up and executed the search warrant. I think there's a method to their madness, in quotes, of course. All I'm saying is I think they have a plan, they have a strategy. And before they executed the search warrant, they are looking out for certain things. And I'm sure they are convinced they are going to find more than just those bullets after they are done searching through the things that they've seized, especially the hard drives, the cell phones, and the other stuff. And for those of you who didn't know, Tupac has a sister. Yeah, so Tupac's sister is called Sechua and she's popularly known as Set. And she took to her Instagram upon the breaking of this to share her thoughts on these recent developments. She emphasized the significance of that moment after 27 years of silence surrounding the case. Now, she expressed the importance of acknowledging Tupac's life and death and called for justice on all fronts. So this was exactly what she said. There is no doubt that this is a pivotal moment. The silence of the past 27 years surrounding this case has spoken loudly in our community. It's important to me that the world, the country, the justice system and our people acknowledge the gravity of the passing of this man, my brother my mother's son, my father's son. His life and death matters and should not go unsolved or unrecognized. So yes, today is a victory, but I will reserve judgment until all the facts and legal proceedings are complete. There have been multiple hands involved and there remains so much surrounding the life and death of my brother, Tupac, and our Shakur family overall. We are seeking real justice on all fronts. And I agree with her. I agree with her perfectly because I, I shudder to think what a family will be going through in their shoes. 
having lost a family member under such tragic circumstances and having to wait for so long, almost three decades, to get any semblance of justice. So I agree with her perfectly and I hope that they still have the strength to endure what is about to come. Now back to Kifi D's issue. Law enforcement officials have actually revealed that Kifi D played a pivotal role in reigniting the investigation. So he actually reignited the, the, the investigation through certain things that he did. And they went on to elaborate that in 2018, Kifi D began granting interviews and eventually even went on to author a book in which he detailed his involvement in the fatal shooting of Tupac Shakur. And according to law enforcement, this new evidence led to a grand jury indictment which charged Kifi D with one count of open murder with the use of a deadly weapon along with a gang enhancement. So the arrest of Kifi D had now become a major development in the case, which had gripped the public's imagination for nearly three decades. And I mentioned this, Tupac Shakur's murder actually remained a prominent and unsolved chapter in the history of policing in America and also in the history of hip hop and the American pop culture. And I think it's, it's not just limited to America is in the history of the world as far as music is concerned at least or as far as popular figures are concerned because i told you i'm in ghana west africa and this case became very relevant at that time and is still relevant to date people still keep asking who actually ended tupac's life so with this arrest there is now newfound hope that the truth about what happened on that tragic night in 1996 may finally come to light. And I think it's long, long overdue. Now, while the arrest marks a significant step forward, I think that the investigation is still very far from over because legal proceedings are going to unfold and the full extent of Kifidi's involvement as well as any other potential connections to others will also have to be examined in detail. That alone is going to be a journey to travel. Already, there are people speculating that Puff Daddy or PDD could be in the mix as having been the one who put a $1 million hit out on Tupac and Suj Knight on that fateful night. That is yet to be confirmed or substantiated, but I, I agree that this case is far from over. There has been this breakthrough, but it, it in no way means that the case has ended. I think that the journey is now getting ready to kickstart. Now, the arrest of Kifi D also reignited the hope that finally one of the most infamous murder cases in music and world history may actually get solved because after 27 years, trust you me, the world is looking forward to at least get closer to understanding the events surrounding the tragic passing of Tupac Shakur. And Kifi D's arrest reminds us that justice delayed is not justice denied, although we prefer justice doesn't delay at all. So, these are, these are interesting times, honestly. These are interesting times. And the police came out in their press conference after the arrest to talk about the fact that there were people who thought that they had given up on the case. And I heard some of those things. I heard some of those allegations against the police. Some people were saying that Tupac in himself was against law enforcement. And that is a fact. He didn't see eye to eye with law enforcement. So some people are saying that due to that, the police were also not ready to look into his passing as a way of showing that, well, if you don't agree with us, we also don't have time for you. But I think that is not a sincere statement. I think that that is not even fair to think 
at all for the police and I don't think the police are that unprofessional. I believe that this case as well as that of the notorious B.I.G. are very, very dicey cases. If you know anything about the gang life or the street life, the code or at least one of the codes is that snitches get stitches. So in such cases, there might actually be real life witnesses who saw what happened. But the problem for the police is who is ready to come forward to testify or to give an account of what happened and is that person ready to risk his or her life? Because if you back trace, you would find that when Tupac got shot, one of his members of the outlaw gang, Gaddafi, actually said that he saw one, at least one of the people that shot Tupac. The police didn't pay attention to him. And unfortunately, just under two months after that, somebody took his life. That alone should tell you something, along with the fact that other people have also come along in this conversation and they have also been suspiciously ended. So I think that it's it wasn't that the police were not interested in the case. I think it's rather that they had their work cut out for them because even getting witnesses to come forward in itself wasn't easy, given that this case involved the gang. And this is not just a gang of three or four people in some small corner. This is a whole gang recognized by law enforcement to be deadly, extreme and wild and unforgiving. So that alone is a constant reminder to people to keep to themselves as far as witnessing or coming to testify on these issues are concerned. So the police would have a difficult time trying to even make progress on this case and at the time too there weren't much of cctv cameras around on the streets so maybe if it's happened now it would have been solved much faster or easier that is not to say the police don't have any blemish on how they handled the case there are instances where they missed some things and they didn't follow through on some witnesses but now finally kifi d has been busted and the grand jury is getting ready for him. Kifi D is going to court. Now, there are people saying that Kifi D snitched on himself. If you take his book, there are certain quotes in there that some people are saying that he implicated himself by putting out those quotes in the book. Additionally, he also went on several interviews, including that of Vlad TV giving extensive accounts of what happened on that fateful night. And some are also saying that some of those statements actually ended up implicating him. Now, recently, DJ Vlad of Vlad TV has come out to say on an interview with Piers Morgan that the police have actually reached out to him, asking that he gives them the raw footages of the sessions he had with Kifi D, but that he is refusing to cooperate with the police and hand them those videos. And like I said, <laughs> that's I, I, in a way, by extension, I personally think that that is also part of the street code because it seems that if you go snitching, you are almost guaranteed that you are going to get the stitches. So this has been ingrained into people and People are very, very, very skeptical about coming forward to testify on some of these things. But I think that unlike when the incident happened in 1996, this time around the police might have an advantage with regards to evidence on the ground and how to approach it. Thus, they executing this search warrant and eventually arresting Kifi D. There are people who are insinuating that by extension, Puff Daddy or PDD is shaking in his boots, literally, because it seems that Kifi D might have taken some money that was put out as hate money by PDD on the head of Tupac and Sweet Knight. How is this case going to end? 
I hope it's not going to end in another disappointing situ- situation where the police come to arouse the public about they being close to busting a suspect and pros- uh, prosecuting the suspect only to end up allowing people to go back again scot free because it was in them. I think that this case has traveled too long and the time for solving this case is already 26 to 27 years too late for the police to make any mistakes this time around. They have a final chance to get it right and I'm hoping that they will get it right if not for anything at least for the sake of the people involved. First of all, the deceased, Tupac Amaru Shakur. Secondly, his grieving family and all his loved ones. And thirdly, for the reputation of law enforcement as well. Because the longer such cases stay unsolved, it begins to embolden people who think that they can get away with some of these unscrupulous activities. Imagine how things would have played out if Kifidi, as he's been reported, had not self-implicated himself in his books or in his interviews. How would the case have been broken? How would the breakthrough have come? I'm not saying that the law enforcement officers couldn't have worked through any other means. I don't know what they were doing before that, but I'm just asking a genuine question. All I'm saying is that I think they owe it to everybody, including themselves and their reputation, to close this case effectively and successfully and grant justice for those who have been affected and their life lost. Kifi D is 60 years as of now. If he is convicted, I don't think Kifi D is going to come out. I don't even know how things are going to go for him if he is sentenced, given the extent of popularity of the victim and how some people are passionate about this case. He himself has attested that he has cancer and he is just confessing because he needs peace. Yeah, I think that he was being haunted by what happened. That is, if he's actually knowing what he says he's knowing, I think the truth was actually haunting him and he needed to set himself free. And probably now he may be free unless he decides to change his story and go a different route. But I'm following this case. In a few days, Kifi D might appear in court and will be there to bring you the updates as and when they are due. Until then, hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section. Do you think he did it? There are some people saying that Kifi D is just the fall guy. Do you believe that? If not, let me know. There's another gentleman saying that Kifi D is Tupac. <laughs> and I don't know about that. If you look at them, I don't even know if there is actually a resemblance, but the age doesn't match up. This case is about 27 years old. Tupac was not yet 30 at the time, and Kifi D is 60 years old. So I think there is an overlapping in that regard. But again, I'm not surprised because the case of Tupac seems to give birth to several new conspiracies every time. So I'm sure this would be one of them. But I'm counting on the authorities to set the record straight and close the case. Until then, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, keep an eye out and stay safe. I'll catch you on the next one.